Entopia, also known as Crowbar's Interdimensional Bridge, is a unique base on 2B2T. It's home to a number of structures and history that only a few players know of. You may be wondering, who constructed this place? What was the purpose of its construction? And where does it stand today? Today in this video, you'll learn about Entopia, as well as how the discovery of this location could, and most likely will, lead to the discovery of other secret bases all across the server. Entopia was founded back in 2018 by the players Autopia and Lane. Lay moved a lot of his alternate Minecraft accounts to this place he founded hundreds of thousands of blocks in the end dimension, and would allow his friends to use the alts in order to build at this location. But most never did, as they got tired of playing on 2B2T. Lane used a duplication glitch to get shulkers, and Octobia moved some shulkers with stacked armor and other things normally not stacked to this location. One of the first builds at Entopia was a tower built by Octobia. He would call it the hub, and his goal was to expand it from there by adding a few additional buildings nearby to turn it into a town. Lane constructed a library that was linked to the hub, and after the demise of Space Valkyria 3's third site, a player named Jack the Ripa would join them. Jack began constructing a structure dubbed Cloud Base, but it would only build there minorly since he was also building at the second site of Space Valkyria 3. The base needed a name, so Lane and Jack came up with the name Entopia. Autopia had different names for it, like Dark Star, Space Balls, and Cake Town. But the name Entopia stuck with the base since the group kept calling it that way. The group decided to build bridges to connect the structures because they were so far apart. There were even plans to rebuild all Space Valkyria versions between Autopia's Tower Hub and Lane's Library. But by the beginning of 2020, there had been an account authentication exploit, and the group were too afraid to build there. But once it was fixed, the group kept finding excuses not to do much of anything and had grown tired of 2B2T. So their plans were put on hold. Antopia would lay dormant for many months, and its future appeared to be bleak. Yet, a ray of hope appeared a few months later. A player named Crowbar01 was at his base called Incursion. He had an idea of making a bridge from a spark of an idea at Mu Megabase when they were planning to add bridges from the center mountain to the rim canals. He cleared a large area in order to construct a bridge. However, the authentication exploit happened around this time, so he moved to Entopia. Compared to his past builds, it was much the same, peaceful and uneventful, just the way he liked it. His plan was to build portals at the front and end, and a big bridge in the middle with a canal, houses, boats, and other structures. Crowbar started from bottom to top. He built the bridge's foundation and added sewers. The sewers had endermites, renamed to Sewer Rats, and under the glass in the main canal had Rabid Sea Slugs. The bridge's foundation also had farms in them, and little by little, Crowbar added to the canal with boats and houses. And I can't fully express how much detail and effort Crowbar put into this build. Every house, market, and storage room were filled with decorations, each one distinct from the others. And after four months of building, this is what he built. When the bridge was near completion, Crowbar would message his close friend Turban about the bridge. Crowbar sent him a world download of the bridge that was moved to spawn and asked Turban to render it. Crowbar would post Turban's renders on the 2B2T subreddit on September 24, 2020, and the post would receive over 14,000 upvotes. Players were amazed at how much detail and effort Crowbar put into the build. 
Crowbar's bridge would stay dormant for a while, but Crowbar planned to add more after taking a break and moving to another base called White Haven. However, one day, Crowbar would receive screenshots from a player named I'm Stex showing that he had found the bridge. So, how could a base hundreds of thousands of blocks away from spawn end up being discovered? Well, you'll have to hear the backstory of the players that discovered it, and trust me, it's pretty interesting. Their story begins with a player named Durka QT. He joined 2B2T in March of 2021, and throughout his time on the server, he was able to hunt and collect a lot of items from bases and stashes. Eventually, he collected a stash of over 1,000 dubs of armor and supplies, all of which he obtained by hunting. He sits on the coordinates for a couple mega bases, and no one knows since he likes to do his own thing, take world downloads, appreciate the base, and then move on. Durka also loves playing around with configurations, and his group, the Spawn Base Association, or SBA for short, had plenty of time since 2B2T's priority queue had been at zero for a few months. He was able to find many powerful things and has a backlog of travel exploits. One of his strongest travel exploits can travel along loaded chunks and avoid going into new chunks, which makes it incredibly easy to hunt the end dimension. One day, Durka said to his group, said, hey, um, when I get into the end, because we've all been chomping at the bits to go to our base in the end, um, I will live stream with cords on until I find the first stash and I, we were going to eat, you know, we were going to split the stash and everybody's going to get some loot and have a good time. And only after a few hours of exploring with the exploit, Durka accidentally came across Crowbar's bridge. Crowbar wasn't online when Durka got there, and one of the first players who got the coordinates was a player named Solo Dido, which was not a good thing. Dido was already on his way out of the spawn base association. As soon as the group heard, he talked about infesting computers with rats from administration tools, which is basically taking control of your computer. He was trying to do it to new players so he could take their Minecraft accounts or computer's bank account information. The group wasn't really about that, so they kicked him from the group and stream. By doing so, Dido leaked Crowbar's base to a player named I'm Stex, who is in the group Moonshine. So, what were Solo Dido and I'm Stex going to do with the information? Well, they were going to grief the bridge for clout. The rumor had reached the spawn base association, who informed Crowbar through Turban. Turban would then tell Durka that Crowbar logged in and encountered I'm Stex. To avoid a conflict, Crowbar played nice and signed him a book while taking world downloads of the bridge. I'm Stex was waiting for his friends so they could grief it. After taking world downloads, Crowbar started burning houses and placed withers. But I'm Stex would eventually kill Crowbar, and he wasn't able to self-grief his own build. Fortunately, the Spawn Base Association planned ahead because one of the members, Paul Steve007, was already logged out on his alternate Minecraft account and had left it there on purpose. The group waited until Solo Dido and I'm Stex were offline, and since Crowbar's wishes were for a video to not come out with clout for their group, Paul Steve007 ended up placing around 100 withers with the name Moonshine on bottom all over the build and did a proper grief to the bridge. Durka spoke with Crowbar and told him to let him know if he needed anything, as well as giving Crowbar access to the travel exploit. Today, Entopia is griefed, but is now preserved in World Downloads and on Turbin's 2B2T archive server. Crowbar's bridge would show that even in the chaotic hellscape that is 2B2T, there will always be unique and amazing builds throughout the server. Crowbar intends to build more bases in the future, and from what he told me, his next build will be his most ambitious yet.